Today's lecture is going to be on programming for muscular fitness. We're going to start off with what are the steps that you're going to go through in order to actually program for a client. The second thing we're going to go into is what exactly is programming um, and kind of give you some details of that. And then the third step is introducing you to some introductory as well as advanced resistance training programs so that you can use them in the future from, for some examples. So how do we start? First things first and first step, right, is you need to make sure that you can find a template for programming that works for you. Now, this is true if you're training your clients in person or online, like where the most of the world is going, right? So regardless of with your working with a person in person or if you're working with them online, it's important that you have a template that you can use. Now, I'm gonna provide you all with a few examples um, and I think what you would like to do is kind of look at each example and see whether or not you like them, right? Because there's pros and cons to each one. So we could take this first one here for an example. Um, okay, so it's nice. You can have a spot to put in the date, the week, and the day. You are limited to five sets. Um, and your body parts, it's kind of organizes it by body part, right? Um, it looks like you can do that up to 10. Um, the colors are kind of interesting. It only has weights and reps. There's no spot to kind of put how they feel. Um, there's no place for them to write notes. Um, so you're kind of limited. This is really basic, right? And it's a good place to start. Um, and certainly if this is what works best for you, then you can use this. Here's another one. And many of you have probably seen this before in Kin 263. And so while this does provide you a lot of options because it not only gives you days but it actually gives you monday through sunday so it gives you days of the week and then it allows you to put in the date um, that's nice but there are all certainly some limitations to this right so if you look at each day you're limited to three sets so there are some people who are going to do more than three sets like if you're a power athlete and you're only doing repetitions of one to six you're likely going to be doing more sets because your repetitions are lower um, as you can see in here, there's a spot for reps and weight. On the left-hand side, you can see the spot for exercise. Um, so there are, again, pros and cons to this. Um, if this is a format that you like, it's definitely one that you can use and potentially modify. Um, but um, it's something that you've seen before. Here's one that's kind of similar. Um, again, it's, there's a lot going on on this one piece of paper, right? So you can see that it actually has multiple weeks within that one page. Um, what's nice about this, I like that there's kind of a spot for them to enter their weekly goal because um, that, again, is a little bit more psychophysical. Um, there's only three days, which is interesting, within each week. So that limits this person for only doing three different lifting days in that week. So you can certainly adapt this and change it. Um, nice, again, that you have the weights, reps, and sets. You have the different exercises up to 10. Um, but a lot, again, there's a lot kind of going on here because you're trying to have four weeks into one page. Here's another example. Um, and again, if you were to just go on the internet and kind of pull up their fitness programming or um, exercise prescription logs, here's some examples that you can pull up. Um, this one specifically has some examples in it, but as you can see, it's basically three different days. What's nice about this one is that there's a spot for the pre and post workout which recognizes kind of the importance of those factors in your training. And I think a lot of times we forget, um, maybe not to incorporate it, but we forget to put some effort and intention into how we program and design that pre-workout and post-workout. So this nicely um, kind of reminds us to do that as personal trainers. Um, here's another one that I've seen. Um, again, you have the weeks at the top, so you fill that in. I love that they have the goal there. Again, there's the warm up and the cool down. Um, what's so nice about this log that's different that you haven't seen in any of the other logs is that there's actually a spot for cardiovascular training as well as strength training. So if you're looking at this, this looks very similar to the one that you probably used in your classes when you use the fit book, right? Um, and so again, this is nice for someone who not only wants to do resistance training, but also wants to incorporate some other type of training, including cardiovascular training. So what happens if you're looking at all these different logs and you don't like what's currently available? So say you go on to Google and you type that in, fitness logs, and there's nothing there that currently exists. What do you do? Hopefully the answer for you is you make your own, right? So that's a skill set that um, hopefully you guys have developed the ability to use Excel or table and Word. 
Um, if you have enough money, you can actually hire, um, you can kind of sketch out your design and hire a graphic artist to make it kind of look nice and pretty. Um, and so what I'm about to show you all is an example that I created um, for my, actually my friend and I created for our company, Smart Fit Chicks. And so this is a fitness um, binder, fitness log that someone can use. Um, we actually sell this on Etsy so people can buy it. Um, it's really affordable. That was the whole goal of it. And then they print it themselves um, and they can either bind it or they can put it in small little, um, the small tiny little binders. So I've used this in the past and basically what happened is that we couldn't find a log that we liked and we wanted to adapt it, so we made our own. So this is what you can see. This is the cover page on the left and then that's that first page on the inside or academic. So, you know, we wanted to make sure that we created um, something that looked a little bit more academic and professional. Um, so again, that's the cover and the inside page. And then what you see on the inside is something that we wanted. And again, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's perfect and it doesn't mean that it's gonna be right for you, but I'll walk you through why we wanted to have it. So we like the idea of being able to circle the date um, or the day of the week, as well as enter the date and then the time. And the time is because when my friend and I were training, we started to realize some differences in how we were performing based on the time of day. So it's a nice way of tracking that. Um, as you can see at the top, we have muscle groups, although you know that's kind of um, based on what we learned a few weeks ago, that kind of can be limiting because if you're doing more functional type training or myofascial type training, you may not be able to use that. Okay, um, so you may have to cross that off and just put myofascial training. So there's a spot at the top for cardio, um, and then there's a spot at the bottom for weights. Uh, we have multiple different options for putting in their uh, different exercises, up to six sets. I mean, again, that could be limiting if someone wants to do more than that. Um, but most notably, we added the notes section because, again, a lot of our training is um, includes psychological components as well. So making sure that our clients are writing down how they feel, different barriers that they had that day, anything that could help us as coaches understand their experiences um, when they were doing these workouts. And then at the very bottom, there's a little spot for them to um, circle how they feel based on the different emoji. So step one is to find a fitness log that you like and can use. And step two is to review your client's goals and needs. So once you have your client, make sure you have your fitness log ready to go. Okay, and then you're gonna go through their goals. What are, what are the things that they want? What are the things that they actually need? Do they want weight loss, but really need to work on their strength and flexibility, right? Do they want to get buff, but really need to focus on their corrective exercises? So that's gonna be a balance that you're going to have to uh, work with when you are training clients, because oftentimes they're gonna come, come to you with certain goals and wants and desires, but really you're gonna recognize certain needs based on the assessment that you run. So it's important to incorporate those, and then if you are incorporating, incorporating things that are maybe not necessarily part of their goals, to show them how it does align with their goals. So for instance, if they want to lose weight, um, you can show them how doing some corrective exercises will help them sit up taller and stand a little bit taller and help them with their posture so that they're, you know, able to sit up taller and use, engage their core a little bit more than if they were had a kyphosis position. Okay, so if they're engaging their core, they're going to be working on their abdominal muscles, which is going to help them eventually with weight loss, right? So kind of show them that connection. So step one, creating the fitness log. Step two, reviewing your client's goals and needs. And then step three, actually doing the programming. So when you go through and start programming for your clients, you need to think about a multiple different things. Um, what kind of progression or periodization are you going to be using? And we're gonna be going over periodization in a subsequent lecture. Um, what kind of exercises do you wanna use? What kind of sequences are you gonna use? What's your intensity and load gonna be? Uh, what's your volume and frequency? Are you going to incorporate rest in there? So there's multiple different components that go into your entire program design. And I know this is hopefully a review for you all since you've gone over this in previous courses. Okay, Always making sure that we program for equipment that our clients have. Now this is probably easy when you're programming for clients that you're training in person. This is a little bit more challenging when you're programming for online clients. So for many of my clients that I coach online, one of the first things I ask them when I have an assessment with them is what equipment do you have available to you at the house? And when what equipment do you have available to you when you, if you do go to a, a different facility? Okay, um, and then also noting reassessment. So in your program that you build, when are you going to reassess them to see if there are any changes pre and post? 
So right now I want you to take a quick moment and have a learning recap. I want you to pause and think about the three different steps that go into programming. What are those three steps and how would you describe them? Pause, do that, look back at your notes, and when you're ready, we're gonna start this next lecture.